Nowadays manufacturers have become absolutely shameless. They take legendary names from their history and absolutely destroy that particular model's reputation with their modern iteration. There have been many such offender like Mitsubishi with their Eclipse, Ford with their Mustang Mark E. Some would even say that the new A90 Supra is also in that category. And to give you an even more relatable example, Tata and their modern iteration of the Safari. But there is one such brand that has done justice to a legendary model from the past and they have done it with some skill. This is the all new Defender and this has some very important shoes to fill. The last Defender was on sale for uh, 33 years. The Defender lineage can be traced back to World War II when the British Army used the Land Rover series as their military vehicles to fight the opposition. So this has some very big and very important shoes to fill and today we're going to find out if it can do that as well as uh, appeal to the newer market in a modern and very futuristic way. This new Defender still retains that classic boxy shape design that the old Defender was famous for and it has a lot of elements from the original Defender. For example, these three-way split headlights which are very very iconic, the three-way split taillight design, the roof separation line and the overall proportions of this new Defender 110 are very similar to the Defender 110 of the older days. And this was going to be a very weird transition for the Defender purists in any sort of way because it's basically like jumping from the iPhone 3G all the way up to the latest iPhone which is the iPhone 12 Pro. So it was going to be a weird transition and these smoothened out edges, this minimalistic design was anyways going to be an eyesore for the purists that love the Defender. Some things that you do not understand about the Defender in photographs and on film is just how absolutely massive this thing is. So for comparison today, we've gotten one of my cars, the Alto 800 and once the Alto is beside the Defender, you can just see how big that Defender is and how much of a dinosaur it looks in front of this little Alto. Overall, the Defender is a very handsome looking car in my opinion. It is tough, muscular and to be honest, we didn't expect anything else. The proportions are just right in terms of a Defender. But maybe it is a bit too large for India with our cramped city streets and motorcycles hovering around like mosquitoes. On this channel, we criticize cars like the Kia Seltos, Hyundai Creta, etc, etc to be named as SUVs. But the Defender is the exact opposite. This is the definition of what an SUV is supposed to be. A 4x4 drivetrain, low range gearbox and ground clearance enough to swallow a mountain. Although most Defender owners will think twice before taking their 1 crore plus car off of the road. Yeah, bagging up some bodywork on this car is a costly affair. Although there is one way to get around banging up the underbelly of your Defender. That is by putting it into off-road height mode. And just look at how much ground clearance the Defender has now. Now I'm going to go down this mild off-road course that we have over here, nothing too challenging for this car at all. So I have my uh, terrain response system over here which is very very good and it has been one of the most useful things that Land Rover has ever come out with and it makes this thing excel over any of its competition when it comes to off-road. So I just press this button over here and the AC control turns into the selector for it. So I basically have uh, 8 uh, terrain response modes for it. I have eco, comfort, uh, then I have grass, gravel, snow, I have mud and ruts, I have sand, I have rock crawl, I have wade and then I have a custom configurable uh, driving mode. So right now looking at the conditions, grass, gravel and snow looks to be the one to go for. So basically what terrain response does is it alters your ride height or you can uh, do your ride height using this button over here. So it has three ride height modes uh, as standard accessible normal and off-road currently i'm in off-road so i have the maximum amount of ground clearance so i don't bang up my underside of my 1.5 crore land rover defender uh, when it comes to the terrain response like i said it changes the ride height it changes the power delivery of the engine uh, the throttle response because we don't want any sort of unnecessary jerky inputs from my side and uh, it changes the traction control system as well so the traction control system in land rovers is absolutely 
absolutely amazing. Again, one of the best things to come in the Land Rovers is the traction control system. I have no slip whatsoever. Uh, since this is a proper off-roader as well, uh, I have a 4x4 low setting. So if I'm in some extreme conditions and I need to get that extra amount of grip, I can just tap this button over here and get 4x4 low. But since I'm in this puny ass place that has absolutely no problems at all yeah the Land Rover is not even batting an eye towards the 4x4 low setting uh, once you put it into off-road mode any off-road mode for that factor uh, a few things start to come up on the dash and the infotainment screen uh, first of all on the instrument cluster I can see my axles and all of my other off-roady things like that uh, and I can see the uh, wheel articulation the amount of power going to each wheel and everything on the instrument cluster then if I'm in some sort of weird situation where I don't know where the rocks are uh, there is a screen that comes on to the infotainment screen and I can select through that so I can make sure that I don't that I'm not curbing my wheels while going off-road or I'm not hitting a rock unnecessarily and in fact there are so many cameras in this car that Land Rover has the option of selecting the camera and again I can look at each and every individual camera in 3D and in that uh, third person view so that I can make sure that I'm going the right way absolutely precisely. But just like any other car, the Defender is not perfect. This particular Defender is the P300 SE. And my problem with that name is the P300 part. You see, this Defender, this Defender gets the 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine from the Ingenium series of petrol engines. And well, honestly, it feels a little inadequate in this car. You see, the 2-liter 4-cylinder that Jaguar and Land Rover have made is absolutely amazing in other cars. For example, we thoroughly enjoyed it in the Jaguar XC P250. But in the Defender, it feels like a skinny guy is trying to bench press Olympian levels of weights. And well, it just does not have that SUV kind of feel to it, if you know what I mean. Usually in such big SUVs, you need a diesel engine and well, the Defender comes with a diesel option. You get the D300 in the Defender lineup and that is a 3-litre turbo diesel inline 6 engine and well, I think that will be a better engine at least in real life because on paper, that engine technically makes 50 horsepower less but it's not about that, it's about the torque in these cars. So that is definitely a better option than this little thing over here. That said, the 2-litre turbo just 4-cylinder is an amazing engine like in other cars, like I just said. But in the Defender, yeah, just does not work in that sort of way. It's lovely, isn't it? This has to be one of my most favourite interiors to come out in recent years. It's so unique and so funky. I mean, the Germans always have a set sort of design, but this is very unique and I love the way it has been designed. And more importantly, there's just so much to talk about in this interior. Now, first of all, I love the fact that Land Rover has kept the ruggedness and that sturdiness inside the car as well. Just look at the door card. I mean, you can see the rivets and the screws and everything and the exterior body colour has also been moved into the inside so that you have have that tough look inside and the door itself is super heavy so if you want to open the door you have to give it a proper nudge and a proper pull to open or shut it uh, overall the dash is very unique looking first of all you have this nice suede alcantara finish all on top of the dash and instead of you know keeping the dash like full and like just very common looking uh, the passenger side is a little bit hollow, so you have space to keep your phones. You have a uh, USB port over here as well. Massive Defender embossing inside the dashboard over here. You have a central screen and this instrument cluster. Space, I mean, I don't even have to get started with. There is enough space to carry a bloody village inside this car. Headroom is sufficient, legroom is sufficient, even for the back seats. And in fact, this is a 5 plus 2. You can fold up the last row as well and have two extra people sitting in the back. And even after you do that, there is enough space in the boot to carry some sort of luggage. But this is still a Land Rover at the end of the day. So it has to fulfill that luxury side of things as well. So how does this thing work on the road? 
well on the road first of all if you want to drive this thing make sure that you have applied for your truck license because that's how massive this thing is i've driven an endeavor i've driven your normal jeep compass and stuff and those are decently big cars for india i mean you have to be aware of your surroundings to drive them in the tight streets of india but with this you literally are driving with the dimensions of a truck and you can see a truck going by and i'm basically at the same height as him and that is the thing once you start driving this thing on highways you are eye level with truck drivers that's how high this thing is in off road mode so uh, i've popped it into comfort mode right now the suspension has been lowered a little bit and very honestly the suspension since it's an off road vehicle it has lots and lots of undulations and it can take the road very very nicely bumps and all are basically gone unnoticed in this car the slight amount of hints are there when you go over something really really harsh but again it's a massive suv you barely feel anything and that's the other thing with this car since it's so big and it has so much ground clearance you don't even have to stop for speed breakers sometimes that's how amazing this car is to drive but again as a city vehicle or something like that it is just way too impractical because finding parking parking it actually in the city and driving it in these small little streets is a massive hassle and it is something that i would not suggest at all uh, the gearbox is pretty smooth you don't feel the gear changes at all the engine when you when you're driving it on road feels adequate enough uh, but when you're on the highway it feels that it's working over time to give you that uh, level of cruising speed at 80 90 km an hour uh, again overall this car is very comfortable but the engine is the only place where it lacks in my opinion uh the interior is absolutely fabulous apart from the ui that the instrument cluster and the uh, infotainment system have i absolutely love this gear selector which is on the dashboard instead of somewhere over here in the middle super accessible turning radius ah uh, i don't think this is the forte of this car but since it's a massive suv if you if i want to turn it i can just put it on to the sidewalk as well and then take my turn no problems at all This modern Defender is one of the best retro revivals to come out in recent years. No part of this Defender will disappoint with its looks being homage to the original and with its interior living up to its British heritage. The Defender is a great all-rounder. So for example, if you're looking to buy let's say a Wrangler but you don't want that plasticky interior, the Defender is the perfect upgrade. And moreover, it will double down as your luxury SUV in the household. The Defender in these modern times is definitely a mammoth among elephants. McRae on the inside going to take it. And Senna sprints away. 